The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. That was good, my friends. Just as I was, uh, you know, thinking what great joy and, um, and excitement, what great Paschal joy we have to be here this morning, you all nearly didn't sing the, the Alleluia. <laughs> You're not ready. You, we're going to offer the sacrifice of the Mass. You're not ready to sing an Alleluia? Come on. What Jesus has done for us. I mean, this is, this is a place of such great rejoicing. Somehow my voice is louder than all of yours put together. I don't know. No, that's my. That's because my voice is nearer to my ear. You know, I'm sure if I were down there with you all, then I would be hearing it much more loudly. So anyway, anyway look, I'm. Not, I don't rail on the on the idea of full and active participation. Of course, it's a great concept, liturgical participation from the Second Vatican Council. Uh, full and active participation isn't singing loudly. It's uniting ourselves to Jesus. And that's the, that's the thrust of the gospel uh, that we have today, right? I mean, I, I might be tempted to look for signs of life this Monday morning. <laughs> Can I say, like, you got me out of bed on Monday morning. Do you know what I mean? I'm here to serve you. <laughs> anyway, I might be looking for signs of life on Monday morning, but I'm not privileged to have the signs, the signs of life that the Lord, in fact, is working to stir up in you. And, you, you know, you don't, have, you don't have access to my heart except the silly things that come out of my mouth, you know. <laughs> uh, but, he, but here, what are, what are we looking at? We're looking at people coming to Jesus, what, for their own, for their own purposes, for their own, for their own ambition, their own agenda. Yeah, Jesus, we, we, we need to keep the passages together. This one, the one that, that comes before it, the feeding of the 5,000, and the fact that the crowd wants to, wants to come and t- carry Jesus off and make him king. That's actually the key that has us understand what's going on here when, when they all come to him and realize something, something a bit weird is going on. Jesus wasn't with them in the boat, and somehow he's made it here. He couldn't have gone across the land. It would have taken him a lot longer and, and so on and so forth. Something's happened. Something is happening here, um, and we don't, know, we don't know what it is, but, but we're you know, marveling at the work that he's, he's done. We're, we're eager uh, to... Um, to have him, I should say, because I was going to say, we're eager to join him. That's not, that's not what's going on. We're eager to have him join us. He, we want him to take on our cause, right? The one who has the power to, to multiply loaves and fish and, and feed the 5,000 and gather wicker, bas- wicker baskets full of fragments left over, we're eager for him to join us. Here's, here's what I want, and surely this man is the one to achieve it for me. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. It's Jesus who is the Messiah. He is the, he is the anointed of God. He is at the head of his people. He is at, he is at the head of God's renewal movement. Right? Just as God called Israel into life to, rever- to reverse the rebellion of mankind that had happened in the fall, so too Jesus takes on that, that same mission and drives it forward to completion. In fact, what Jesus says here gives us some sense of what needs to happen in order for him to gather that new Israel to himself and for that new Israel to make its way in the world. The new Israel, that's you, that's me. We're moving together as the body of Christ, the new Israel. When they come to him and say, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? He says, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. 
nothing short of the total transformation of our hearts and lives is going to count here. We have to believe in the one that God sent. We have to believe in Jesus. We have to entrust ourselves whole and entire to Jesus. That's what's going to make the difference. You want to be part of a renewal movement that is supposed to restore all of creation? Now, when I ask that question, of course, it's rhetorical, but you should say, yes, I do. And your presence here this morning says, yes, I do. I want to be part of God's renewal movement, the renewal of mankind, finding his proper place in God's creation, and restoring the entire world so that it can live to the plan and purpose of God. Yes, that's why we're here. If we, want, if we want to be part of that, what do we need? We need to be transformed. That's what needs to happen. We need to be transformed from the inside out or from the outside in, however God wants to do it. But from we have to be transformed whole and entire. We're being called by Jesus for this. And how does it happen? It happens through belief. It happens by our entrusting ourselves to Jesus. We have to trust him no matter, what, no matter where we are. No matter what's going on, we have, to, we have to trust him. We can trust him. How can we not trust him, in fact? He's the one who's at the head of his people. And, and we're right there, looking, looking to him. Where is he going? What is he up to? What is he doing? What is it, what, how is he breathing his life into me now so that I can follow him faithfully on the way? That's all that matters. You know, we, ce we celebrate the Feast of St. Athanasius uh, today great defender of the divinity of Christ, fantastic, spent uh, a total of, I think, he, I think he was sent into exile three times for his faithfulness, and spent 17, 17 years in exile. Well, you know what, good for him. <laughs> you know, we, we celebrate him today as great saint. Why? Because he was faithful to Jesus. Because Jesus was at the head, he saw him there, right? He saw him at the head, and he gave himself to him, he trusted him, and he followed him wherever he led. The rest of it really is immaterial, faithful to the end, entrusting ourselves to Jesus, following where he goes. That's our, that's our entire life. That's our entire life. So we give ourselves to Jesus again. Here at the altar, we entrust ourselves to God through and within in Jesus, and we receive the fruit of the Paschal banquet. We receive the fruit of Jesus' sacrifice so that we can have the life of God in us, and we can live faithfully to him in everything and at all times.